Hello everyone. Welcome to Giggles Read Aloud. Subscribe to Giggles for more videos. Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Dog Days, the bestseller by Jeff Kinney, part 7. After mom caught me horsing around, she banned me from watching TV until I read the book. So last night, I had to wait until she went to bed before I could get my entertainment fix. I kept thinking about that movie with the muddy hand though. I was afraid that if I was watching TV all by myself late at night, the muddy hand might crawl out of from under the couch and grab my foot or something. The way I solved the problem was by making a trail of clothes and other stuff all the way from my bedroom down to the family room. That way, I was able to make it downstairs and back without ever touching the ground. This morning, Dad tripped over a dictionary I left at the top of the stairs. So now he's mad at me, but I'll take that dad being angry over the alternative any day of the week. My new fear was that the hand is going to crawl up on my bed and get me in my sleep. So lately, I've been covering my whole body with the blanket and leaving a hole so I can breathe. But that strategy has its own risks. Roderick got into my room today and I had to spend the morning trying to wash the taste of a dirty sock out of my mouth. Sunday. Today was my deadline for finishing the first three chapters of Charlotte's Web. When mom found out I wasn't done yet, she said we were going to sit down at the kitchen table until I was finished. About a half hour later, there was a knock at the front door and it was Rowley. I thought maybe he was coming back to the Reading is Fun Club, but when I saw that his dad was with him, I knew something was up. Mr. Jefferson had an official looking piece of paper with the Country Club logo on it. He said it was a bill for all the fruit smoothies me and Rowley ordered at the clubhouse, and the grand total was $83. All those times me and Rowley ordered drinks at the clubhouse. We just wrote down Mr. Jefferson's account number on the tab. Nobody told us someone actually had to pay for all that. I still didn't really understand what Mr. Jefferson was doing at my house. I think he's an architect or something, so if he needs 83 bucks, he can just design an extra building. He talked to mom though, and they both agreed that me and Rowley needed to pay off the tab. I told mom, me and Rowley are just kids and it's not like we have salaries or careers or whatever. But mom said we were just going to have to be creative. Then she said we would have to suspend the Reading is Fun Club's meeting until we paid what we owed. To be honest with you, I'm kind of relieved because at this point, anything that doesn't involve reading sounds pretty good to me. Tuesday, me and Rowley racked our brains all day yesterday trying to figure out how to pay off the $83. Rowley said maybe I should just go to the ATM and withdraw some money to pay off his dad. The reason Rowley said this is because he thinks I'm rich. A couple of years ago during the holidays, Rowley came over and we had just run off the toilet paper at my house. My family was using these holiday cocktail napkins as a substitute until dad got to the store again. Rowley thought that holiday napkins were some kind of really fancy toilet paper, and he asked me if my family was rich. I wasn't going to pass up the opportunity to impress him. Anyway, I'm not rich, and that's the problem. I tried to figure out a way a kid my age could get his hands on some cash, and then it hit me. We could start a lawn care service. I'm not talking about some average run-of-the-mill lawn care service either. I'm talking about a company that takes lawn care to the next level. We decided to name our company the VIP Lawn Service. We called up the Yellow Pages people and told them we wanted to place an ad in their book. And not just one of those tiny little text ads, but a really big one with full color that takes up two whole pages. But get this, the Yellow Pages people told us it was gonna cost us a few thousand bucks to put our ad in the book. I told them that didn't make a lot of sense to me because how is someone supposed to pay for an ad if they haven't even earned any money yet? Me and Rowley realized 
we were gonna have to do this a different way to make our own ads. I figured we could just make flyers and put them in every mailbox in our neighborhood. All we needed was some clip art to get us started. So we went down to the corner store and bought one of those cards women get each other on their birthdays. Then we scanned it into Rowley's computer and pasted pictures of our own heads into the bodies from the card. After that, we got some clip art of lawn tools and put it all together. Then we printed it out. And I have to say, it looked great. I did some math and I figured it would cost us at least a couple hundred bucks in color ink, cartridges and paper to make enough flyers for the whole neighborhood. So we asked Rowley's dad if he'd go out the store and get us all the stuff we needed. Mr. Jefferson didn't go for it. In fact, he told us we couldn't use his computer or print out any more coffee copies of our flyers. I was a little surprised by that because if Mr. Jefferson wanted us to pay him back, he sure wasn't making it easy. But all we could really do was take our flyer and get out of his office. Then me and Rowley went around from house to house, showing everyone our flyers and telling them about the VIP lawn service. After we hit a few houses, we realized it would be a lot easier to just ask the next person we spoke with to pass the flyer along so me and Rowley wouldn't have to do all the walking. Now, the only thing we have to do is sit back and wait for the phone calls to start rolling in. Thursday. Me and Rowley waited all day yesterday, but we didn't get any calls. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Giggles for more videos.